According to Personhood USA, legislators in at least five states are sponsoring bills that would give the unborn full state constitutional rights from the moment of fertilization. What Personhood USA and the legislators supporting these bills aren't telling you is that these bills, if enacted, will hurt all pregnant women. They will not only affect women who want to end their pregnancies, but also women who want to go to term. How do we know this? We know this from the experiences of women from around the country. Amber Marlowe went to deliver her seventh wanted child at a Pennsylvania hospital. The doctor assigned to her decided that her baby was too big and that she needed cesarean surgery. The hospital, relying on the argument that fetuses have legal rights separate from those of the pregnant woman, exactly the rights that Personhood USA wants established in every state, got a court order giving it custody of the fetus before, during, and after delivery, and the right to force Ms. Marlowe to undergo major surgery without her consent. While in active labor, Amber Marlowe fled to another hospital where she delivered a healthy baby naturally. As a result of this experience, the Marlows, who were profoundly opposed to abortion, nevertheless learned how anti-abortion fetal personhood arguments are used to hurt women who want to go to term. 27 years old and 25 weeks pregnant, Angela Carter became critically ill. She, her parents, her husband, and her attending physicians all agreed to carry out her wishes and to keep her alive for as long as possible. Nevertheless, the hospital called an emergency hearing to determine the rights of the fetus. The court held that fetal rights outweighed Angela Carter's right to life and ordered cesarean surgery despite the fact that the surgery could kill Ms. Carter. The surgery was performed. Neither Ms. Carter nor the baby survived. In Florida, Laura Pemberton wanted to have a VBAC, a vaginal birth, after having had previous cesarean surgery. Like many women in the United States, she found that local hospitals would not provide her care unless she agreed to a planned cesarean. She didn't want to undergo another dangerous surgery if she didn't need to. So she stayed home to have her baby. When she was in active labor, she heard a knock on the door. It was the state's attorney, and a sheriff. They had her taken into custody. Her legs were strapped down and she was taken to a hospital where she was forced to have cesarean surgery. When this woman who vehemently opposes abortion argued that her right to informed medical decision making, bodily integrity, due process, and liberty had been violated, she was told that fetal rights outweighed hers. She went on to have three more children, all naturally, proving the doctors and the court wrong. In Utah, another woman gave birth to twins, one of whom was stillborn. She was arrested on murder charges based on the claim that by refusing a cesarean section two weeks earlier, she was responsible for the stillbirth. When asked what legal authority the state had for treating a stillbirth as murder, a spokesman for the Salt Lake County District Attorney's Office cited Utah's feticide law, which was amended to do what the personhood laws will do, to protect the fetus from the moment of conception. Baby was born. These very real experiences make clear that if so-called personhood laws pass, they will provide the basis for depriving pregnant women of their right to make informed decisions, not just about abortion, but also about labor and childbirth. And as the case of Angela Carter shows, such laws would also provide the basis for depriving pregnant women of their own right to life. Opposing the recognition of fetal personhood as a matter of law is not to deny the value of potential life as a matter of religious belief, emotional conviction, or personal experience. Rather, it is to support a real culture of life, one that includes and values the women who give that life. You